No, you pinhead. You no, go you first. Go. You go you're first. No, you go no, first. No, 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 no. I refuse. No, you go first. Oh, all right then. No, go um, on. I'll go first. Clive Barker right. presents um, <laughs> me. I'm Doug Bradley, uh, who played Pinhead and Elliot Spencer in in this particular movie. And Tony Hickox, who directed this particular movie. I was meant to get the credit before Clive, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Anthony Hickox presents Clive Barker. Who exactly. Presents Anthony yeah. Hickox. I don't remember seeing him on the film. set, do you? <laughs> he was, well, he was there for the reshoots. Oh, yeah. yeah. He? Well, he, he, he turned up for an hour. He, he wasn't involved <laughs> initially. No, no, that's very unfair. <laughs> <laughs> A lot I told you, fun. we're going to have fun. <laughs> Wait, so this is what, third? Years ago, yeah, when we were nearly, isn't it? 16, weren't we? Yeah, and 16 well, and 15, 16, respectively. I was, I was 10, yeah. So, uh, um, and Ashley, I remember we shot that Ashley, scene yes. months before the movie was even being made, right? Because she was doing something else. Oliver McQueen, yes. Leonard Pollock, who was a great costume designer, yes. No. And uh, Randy Miller's music, but but we're but, we're hearing Chris Young's we are. original Chris, theme yeah. at this point. We are, we? Yeah. and I don't know where it kind of mixes in and out. And our yeah. mate Steve Hardy, the great Steve Hardy, and Jerry Lively is now a director Jerry, yeah. doing Dungeons yep. and Dragons. Yep. And Pete uh, Atkins, yes. who I'm still writing with. Yes. Since Hellraiser. Bless him. So Chris we, Fig, I did a movie with in '95, Killer Tongue. Wasn't a poor man. I was just going to no. say. <laughs> <laughs> and Larry Mortoff, who, who, along with almost everybody behind the camera, appears in the movie. Yeah. In, fact, in this opening scene, isn't it? Just coming up. We'll, we'll, with that beautiful we'll glass mat. Al cause almost that... the entire crew. Yeah, the, uh, now this is Greensboro, isn't it? Yeah, and the only Dumping real part of it York. is uh, the car and the building on the left. Yeah. And the rest of it's all a painting. And Kevin's feet. And Kevin's feet. Now, he's a writer now. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've met Kevin a couple of times since we did the movie. The, the, I count Hellraiser 3 as one of the happiest professional experiences of my career. I've got to say, me uh, too. Especially when all that ecstasy came out. <laughs> <laughs> I was very happy a lot of the time. I, yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I've I got to say, we did have fun. Because, you yes. know, there was no, it was very weird. There was no real pressure because it was a very small budget. It was yep. independent and we were just kind of left alone to make the movie. Well, and as you know, whenever, when everybody comes together to make a movie, um, sometimes it's just horrible. Nobody likes each other and, right. and, it, and it just all is nosediving from day one. And this was just the precise opposite. Yeah. I made so many friends on this movie. People I'm still in contact with, and and because being in in North Carolina, everybody was kind of on location. So you're on holiday and working in at the fact, same time. The hotel was the same place as the studio. Bizarre, wasn't you it? In fell out of bed in under the set. Point? High, High point. High point. Yeah. Furniture yeah. capital of the world. To to explain to people, there was we were all billeted in a. Uh, a, a, a Howard Johnson's hotel in High Point in North Carolina, and they had a movie studio built in the grounds. Of the hotel, so as Tony says, you'd literally you wake up in the morning and wander downstairs, walk across the the, the uh, parking lot, and you're at work. And there is Larry Mortoff. There is Larry Mortoff, our producer, as the bum. <laughs> Probably okay. how he actually looked by the end <laughs> of the shoot. <laughs> I got to a very funny story coming up about the hospital scene with Larry, but I'll wait for it to come off. <laughs> well, we were all nearly fired. But he, he, he looks even more like the um, the Grateful Dead fan. I always <laughs> had him down as here. <laughs> I saw him the other day in Cannes. Really? Yeah, he was really? walking through the streets. He's doing strange quasi-religious movies now. Is he? From Hellraiser 3 to quasi-religious movies. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I guess Hellraiser 3 is a quasi-religious <laughs> It certainly is. In, in fact, way. yeah, we, in a very roundabout way. Now like this, this was the first day of the shoot. And I remember yes. we, were, we were watching dailies and we were all very happy with it because I think it's a great sequence. Yes. And we get a call from L.A. and Larry... Uh, what's his name? The financer, Larry... Uh, yes. uh, Larry Cuppin. Yeah. Cuppin. Yes. Who actually turned out to be an OK guy, but yeah. I remember getting the call and we were all just about to be fired because he'd never seen worse dailies in his life. Really? That was the message oh. that we got. Oh, we sat there in shock. So, but actually turned in, I think, one of the... Best scenes in the movie, apart from yours, of course. Uh, of course, of course. I love those. No, I remember. I remember coming down on set to 
to watch the good ship setting sail. Yeah. And Terry there, of course. Yeah. Who's, who's, it's all been downhill for her since Hellraiser 3, really. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Especially in science men. fiction stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was an in joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so noted, so noted. Don't think it went past me. Here's my little homage to Cronenberg here, with the tools. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, dead ringers. Yeah, dead yeah. ringers. Exactly. She was very pretty though. Mm. One has to say, well, I mean, she did go on to Star Trek, I bet she made yes. a fortune. Of yes, that. and then uh, she did the, is she still doing the sitcom with Ted Danson? I think they cancelled it. Is, that, is that gone? But, you know, with uh, Star Trek, you don't need to work again. I met her. I met her again. I've met her again a couple of times, but I was in, I was appearing at a haunted house in St. St. Louis. And somebody said, you know, Terry Farrell is in but town you because there was, a, there was a Star Trek convention. Um, so I... I uh, jumped in the car and drove along on the Sunday afternoon and got in and I stood in her line with my shades and baseball cap on. <laughs> I got to the front of the line and she said, yes, and who's this too? And <laughs> pulled the baseball cap. <laughs> she screamed and, I and ran. The table. Yeah. <laughs> I remember she was trying to avoid seeing me because she didn't, she didn't want she to didn't see want me to until see she met me she as had to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you watched the next shot, the reverse? You see there's no roof on that set. Yes. <laughs> Not many people know this. No, no. We couldn't afford a roof. <laughs> <laughs> but Steve, Steve Hardy pulled miracles yeah. Miracle. creating those sets on that sound stage, didn't he? Yeah. This is a great yeah. sequence. It's just nice, isn't it? With yeah. the, it's actually I totally, love those chains. It's kind of taken from, uh, let's see, uh, uh, I can't believe, uh, Jacob's Ladder. Yes. Just that feel. Yeah. The lighting and everything. Wait, wait. And he's in the hospital. You have a thing about shoes, don't you? Ha <laughs> ha. Well, women's that's feet. A, that's the, <laughs> well, I'm Kevin's. That's the <laughs> second close up of shoes we've had so far. <laughs> <laughs> and Paula Marshall, I don't know. She was so great. I used her full eclipse and warlock. Right, yes. And um, what's happened to her? Did she not do a sitcom as well? I think she I mean, did. I haven't, I haven't heard anything of her. I wonder if we get the rated or unrated version of the head exploding. Mm. And this is before CGI, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yes. All hand, yeah. hand animated. But later, we were one of the first horror movies to use the morphing effect. Yes, yeah, in the, with the, the, the skin in, in the nightclub yeah. and, the, and the skin. That was great because I, I didn't see that until oh, good. the day. Oh, good. You've got, you you got, got the full head there. Nice. See, in America, they cut that out. Really? Yeah. Damn Yanks. Damn Yanks. Hold on, I've got to keep talking. Yeah, yeah, sorry. We're, <laughs> sorry, we're, 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 we're enjoying, the, enjoying movie. the movie. I haven't seen it for, well, hold on. When we can were I have a cigarette from you? You certainly can. Thank you. Um, I was going to say something then, but I've forgotten what it was. Yeah, you see, but this is all that atmospheric thing I was still trying to get. There was a bit of an invasion of the body snatchers too. Remember yes. the Philip Kaufman yes. version? Yeah, yeah. Where just the whole, th everything on the street seems to be signing signing the in imminent doom that's just about to happen. Mm. Can we give him a nice little fright moment here? This next scene, oh god, this just brings back some memories. Um, uh, that was definitely... So that's, that was that's New York. the real deal in New York. That was Second us, unit. Well, yes. <laughs> us and the camera. Me, <laughs> yeah. me and the camera standing in Times Square <laughs> getting honked at by cabs. <laughs> that happens to you every time you're in Times mm. Square, though. <laughs> You know, it's funny here because she's talking about her tight skirts and like, yes. you know, I don't want to make it with tight skirts and yes. they keep on pointing out, but she's wearing one of the tightest, shortest skirts. Yes. <laughs> Which no. you probably personally chose from wardrobe. I probably did, didn't I? Yes. That was Lenny trying to make me happy. <laughs> this kid, I remember. Now, this was actually one of Larry's best mates. Right. Wasn't he? Yeah. And, um, I, he, and perfect casting for it, though they tidied up his hair. <laughs> which I thought was a mistake when I first met him. We, remember we went out yeah, for yeah, Chinese was, movie yeah, yeah, yeah. and I took one look at him and thought, oh, brilliant, perfect casting for Doc. Um, and, uh, and then they kind of washed his hair and trimmed it. The boiler room that we probably used right. every teenager in High Point and, I think and so. around. Yeah, so, and that was a nightmare because, of course... It was huge, this place. Well, it? it was a furniture factory. Yeah. It's an old furniture factory. But remember, they all turned up with these little teenage moustaches. 
and we had to shave right. everybody. <laughs> we had a sign on the extra list, nobody come to sit with any facial hair. No facial hair. <laughs> it was great. There's, right. there's some great little cutaway stuff. Yeah. Here. And is this is this uh, Bob stuff, or is this uh, Bob, uh, Bob Keane? Yeah, the, 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 the it's a mix between and Bob things. and Steve, because, you know, yeah, they're, they're yeah. good mates. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, and I told Steve. And here's Pete. And here's Pete. This is the writer. Pete the barman. Eight Hellraisers, isn't he? Or seven? Uh, oh, written? Children? No. Uh, he, he wrote up to Bloodline, so he did... Oh, he didn't, go on, he didn't do the ones after Bloodline? Oh. No, so he did, he did uh, three. Right. Hellbound this and then Bloodline part four. Oh, and yeah, there's the Richard Playboy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, who's on the camera? Yeah. Who was? Who <laughs> exactly? Probably you. <laughs> Jerry, maybe. Yeah. And this band. Who could I think this local heavy metal. I think Larry no, Larry yeah. Coppin actually Oh yes, he was he managed the band oh, right. in one of his companies. Yes. Right? Uh, we did oh, one yes, version the of the Topless Girls. Girl, and then uh, uh, yes. we did one one clean version. And that's Didn't Brent Bolthouse, one of the yes. biggest party promoters in Los Angeles now. Right. Playing uh, the, the DVD head, or CD oh, the, head. Um, the, the girls all came from the local lap dancing class. <laughs> well, there you go, I don't you know. got your Topless Girl. I got my Topless Girl in there, yeah. Actually, I didn't put her in there, but Bob Weinstein said she should go back. <laughs> so I was like, okay, Bob. I thought it was a little if tacky. I, if I must. But, uh, and I love the way this goes to the, the classical room. Mm. Which is, you know, yep. Which is great. I mean, Jerry's a very good DP. He really he is. He really is. Really I mean, is. this was beautifully. Of course, he, he came on to Bloodline. Yeah. Um, I, which I, I kind of got a call about to come and <laughs> come down about out. halfway through. Yes. <laughs> but I couldn't do it. I was doing extreme at the time. I love the. The kind of sixties go go yeah, yeah, yeah. thing behind the uh, the the gauzes there. I know, this blonde is beautiful to her. She was a little twelve she was twelve years old. You're kidding no. me. No. You are kidding no. me. Oh dear. Mm. God you could get arrested very easily, you couldn't you? Certainly could in high point. <laughs> but not not if you're sleeping with your sister, that was okay. <laughs> 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 I thought she was good Tony will not be appearing in North Carolina <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> I love North Carolina. And in fact, I'm appearing in a movie in about one second, aren't I? Kevin was eating this up, wasn't he? He was, yeah. he was loving it. He's right. very good in this. Right. Very, very good. Uh, and now a whole other deal. Now, who is, is that? That who, handsome who guy is there. Is that guy there being filmed dying from 18 <laughs> different angles in... Super slow mo. Yeah, and, and especially when they say the squibs don't hurt, you yeah, know that's a fucking that's, lie. That's a lie. I had twelve yes. of them hit me. I was waiting all morning in makeup while you were doing this. <laughs> I had to get it right. <laughs> no, Tony's still dying. Is it? <laughs> it's a bean field, isn't it? It is. It actually looks Does pretty any, good. Uh, anybody observed that they don't actually have oak trees in Vietnam? Or? Yeah, <laughs> man, we couldn't take it. We didn't have our CGI to take them out in those days. Nope. It and remember, kind of remember worked, it had rained it? and everybody was out in the field picking up uh, Indian mushrooms. arrowheads. Well, they, you may have been picking the mushrooms. Because <laughs> there'd, been, there'd been an Indian settlement by the river there. Oh, really? And when and it then, rained heavily, the arrowheads came, came up from to the, the surface mud. and you just walk around picking them up. I still have a few. Oh, cool. I remember this, this shot killed. Uh, who was the operator on this? It was Richard. Yeah. yeah. He's now DPing, but this one where we go round her really on this long lens and there's about an inch of focus. Right. And it's yes. pitch black. Well, you were fond of doing this. Yeah. Oh, feet again. Yes, there yeah, you go. You see? Slippers this time. Slippers. It's definitely what did a that mean? fetish yeah. thing. Have you been in therapy for a long time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to think. I might have some more feet in my last movie. Because you, but you, you, um, you like to edit in camera. I do. Yeah, yeah, I don't really do the master and that. Yeah. Sometimes I do now, but this one I was very, you know, this one was storyboarded every scene from this one to, yes. and I kind of realize that it doesn't give actors that much of a chance. Some like it, some it, don't. Once you w once you get it, it it's yeah, that's it's, what I find. It takes a little time. It's fine, time. but working in working in close up all the time and without without anything to hang it on, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is what the master gives you. Yeah. It is is difficult. So I've kind of gets, adopted gets around your director's cut problem. <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> it certainly does. They can't fuck it up too much. But uh, 
yeah, except now I'm a little better. But I still don't do the master, but I'll rehearse in the master to let you guys yeah. feel it out. But you also, you, you, you did quite a lot of um, one-shot tracking stuff that yeah, yeah. was yeah, there yeah. was a lot of action and a lot of dialogue, which, which right. I, I love doing. I, I like working like that. Like this stuff now. And it's, it's, and it's nice not no to have coverage. to just mechanically break down a scene, yeah, yeah. which gets a bit... I know, slap me. Dull sometimes. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, me, my bag. This is, I, I really like this thing, too. I remember I storyboarded it on a train. Because mm. I had to go, when I was prepping this, I was going to do whole, and a waxwork to dubbing in New York, and I hated to fly, so I'd take the train. Wow. Yeah. I'm glad I don't hate to fly anymore because mm. I'm on a plane every day. Yes. <laughs> Those days. <laughs> and I remember I was on the train to New York one night and I blocked the scene out. I actually did it on a... The way I used to do this, especially two actors, was from a top shot, not thinking about the camera at all. You'd think it was all done from the camera, but it's not. Right. It was just where I thought, how I thought the people would move in conversation. Yeah. Then I'd start working out where to put the camera and then from there... Yeah storyboard it to the shots so there is some method to the madness mm. no you were you were always you, you were uh, you always had your storyboard folded up in your back pocket you know, <laughs> yes. practically crossing shots off as you went <laughs> that's only because we had you, a um, four week shoot and, no. if you pardon the expression you'd go like a train to don't yeah, you? yeah I mean like a board set ups set up moving on moving on I love this set, by the way. Uh, wait, wait, are you still in touch with um, Paul Martin, who was the, the first AD? You know what? I, he worked with me for a lot after that, and then he moved to San Francisco, I think, got married, and kind right. of based himself out of there, and I could never get him. Now I've been doing movies right. in Europe. It's been, you know, nobody makes movies in America anymore. So. Paul was great. I loved yeah. him. So. And I took him with me, yeah, he did Prince Valiant with me. Okay. So, now that's a movie that was killed by the producers in the cutting room. Wow. Just nice shot, that. Yeah. Nice shot. It was in the comic as well. I wonder if this is a long version. Yeah, it is. Because there was two versions of this. In America, they cut the scene down. Right. But this is one, and this is my voice on Pete Atkins. Because we couldn't get Pete to the end of the looping. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's me. Hello, love. Hello, talk like this. Hello, darling. <laughs> Hello, darling. The writer... Dubbed by the director. <laughs> by the director. How often uh, does that happen? Well, probably all the time, really, <laughs> yeah. if you think about it. You know. <laughs> He's rewritten it's my a, script. It's a whole metaphor for movie mm. making right there, folks. <laughs> I like the scene. I stole the scene, or the idea for the scene, from Flash Gordon, if you remember that movie. I remember the movie. I there's a scene, the scene where there's a great scene. It still really terrifies me when I see that movie, is where the, there's a creature in a log... Mm -hmm. and one of their tests is they have to put their hand into, into the this, into the, the five holes, and one right. of the holes that has a creature in it. Right. And you know, it's one of those witches. Do you feel lucky? Burned. Yeah. Do you feel lucky? Yeah. It always terrified me. So and that was this thing. I'm trying to remember why we changed the pillar from. I think it was. We made from, an excuse for it later from <clears throat> Hellraiser Two. Yeah. We, we we, did, yes, because this is supposedly the pillar as we see it at the end of. Yeah, Hellbound. But we kind of explained isn't. it and developed. Yes. In the, in the flashbacks, we actually on a life took. Of its yeah. Own. We took that. But, but it's a great design. It's, yeah, you know, now you can see the, yeah. they've got all the toys in yeah. America came out last. Yeah. Uh, they're they're yeah. out over here and, and uh, oh, they are. around Europe as well. I get I get a little cardboard box arrives from Necker every so well, often at the breakfast table. It's like Christmas. I wish they'd give me oh. some. I actually spend oh. 10 bucks on these things. Ah. You see? But, yeah, we've got a little CD head. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, the strange rat. Yes, it looked like a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> How to make a rat look alive. Throw it around. Oh, yep. there you go. There you go. Who did us second hand on this? I think it was Dean Lewis, wasn't it? Who supplied the cameras. No, no, Bob Keane. Bob, yeah. Bob, Bob, Bob did this. directed second unit. And, and then Russ was his the DP, DP. Who was my gaffer before this. Yeah. And then uh, Mikey... Centrozemus, who operated, do you remember Mikey? <sighs> He's now my yeah. operator on everything. We've done really? 11 movies together. Oh, great. Yeah. So, 
Well, that was more difficult than you think to get that nice. rod. Yeah, because I'm sure it was. Well, we, it, it, it was on a it was on a, a on gimbal. A tilt. Yeah, yeah, it was on a yeah. gimbal. Yeah. Um, oh, the cute yes. domestic scene. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a good psych out there for a cheesy painting of New York. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good when it's out of focus. It gets a little, a little obvious when she gets close to it. Mm. And the kitchen virgin. That was a great line. Yeah. Come on, then. I'm not allowed to stop. I'm not allowed to enjoy the movie. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to lost think. It, lost in lost memories. <laughs> <laughs> This, I think, actually, this was the last day of the shoot. Did, did Paula actually smoke? No. No, and her character chain smokes. Yeah. yeah. So she might have started off after the movie, but she didn't. And then I saw Terry work the crowd at the uh, the Star Trek convention. She's brilliant. Brilliant. Very, very funny. Mouth like a trooper, too. Yeah. She tends to upset some of the families. But no. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually lives stop next her. To a, she lives next to a friend of mine in LA now. And she's you know, she's kind of a serious person and he's in you know, all night <laughs> party house. So always phoning up and saying, Shut the that fuck would up. Work. Yeah. Do you keep in touch with her? No. I haven't seen her for several years. No, I kept like I said, with Paula we did right. two other movies together, but this was all, like you said, just one shot. Like, and that, that, that backdrop painting works so yeah. well, doesn't it? Yeah. That's all up to the DP, really. Because mm. you, you mm. saw how bad it looked in real life. I mean, I know mm. we love it. When we did the night version of it, you know, we they poked holes in it. That's how you yes. got all the lights. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, the pyramid, I'm trying, I'm trying to think. This was some... Oh, it's the great... The great scene with the guy with the poodle, isn't it? Yeah, uh, the guy with the poodle. Did we just find him on the street? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, he's in Been over there about a month. I think he was a local guy. Oh, is he? Yeah. Dragging the poodle. I think that might be me being the dog. It always gets a laugh. Because <laughs> his ears go up. Look, look, just as you pull him. Cool, these animals. Yeah, and that, this is actually one of my favourite lip scenes in the movie, Inside mm. Me. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's really nice when you get in the other room. I can't remember if this scene was in the original script, or we actually, this was added later. I know it wasn't in the reshoots, but I think for some reason... A lot of these paintings, and the paintings in uh, Kevin's room, painted by they're, they're lo 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 uh, What's her name? Uh, Ashley, Ashley Lawrence's boyfriend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then. Not no oh, more. This is gonna take mm. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> so this one kind of harked back to the Hellraiser two. Yeah. Yes. That really yes. explained for anybody the, who hadn't seen the first two. Yes. The, the little history. The stuff that uh, Doctor Channard, played by Ken Cranham in the in the second movie in Hellbound. All the the files and and research that he was doing on the lament configuration at the uh, Chenard Institute. Yeah. But it's actually Hellraiser three could stand on its own if you haven't yeah. seen the first two. Yes. It's weird. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. I think. Well, they have to, don't they? Yeah. Right. Dude, that's going in. This is a funny scene. My little plug for my favorite vodka coming up. <laughs> the guy in Canada who runs Stolen, he was like, Oh, we have a still from Hellraiser 3. <laughs> they collect everything there's stolen. Now, now what's what, what's the name, the blonde that Kevin's about to Oh, there's a the whole story behind that, isn't it? Mm. That movie nearly she turned up and hadn't read the script and mm. said, I'm not going to do that. Mm. Mm. There's your story. Mm. What was her name? She no, was, no. wasn't she? She, she was, was a friend of Larry's friend, and she was a Grant, wasn't she? And supposedly descended from a what? From General Grant. Oh, really? Wasn't there second? No wonder she didn't want to be tied she, up naked well, in the bed. And Amy, or? Row, right? That's right. And this is your club? I can't 
I think it might have been Amy. But I remember she came home just for a day, and we yeah. we didn't really cost her. She was sent. That was that. That was a scent. And actually, she plays it very well, especially in the bedroom later when she's mm. squeaking. Note to anyone who, who ever does a, a, an audio commentary: make sure you have a cast list in front of you, so you, <laughs> <laughs> you can remember the actors' names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now this set. This is. I love this set, and which nobody ever gets is a crucifix. An upside down. How Steve ever worked out? There's an upside down crucifix. But now this is weird because she. She didn't. Uh, she insisted that her breasts weren't going to show. Exactly, but so, she didn't so mind that his hands Kevin, were grabbing them. Kevin gets the tough job of uh, covering, covering them, <laughs> and it, it looks so much more perverted. Than <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's very weird. Plenty so, of baby oil. Lots and of baby oil in the gym. Around. Yeah. Oh, there is the man. Yeah. Just happened to be here watching. I, I'm, I, it was a closed set. I should, uh, I should point out, I'm not really there. Was that you? Was that no? That was the that was the old fake head. That's just yeah. just the pillar. I like that. Look. Yeah, oh, that's that's Split great. diopter. Yeah, I never get yeah. used anymore. I've got to use them again. They're great. It's from the 80s, they dated a little. You used it again in when in, in the bits we did in the reshoots. And yeah, 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 yeah exactly. climax. Climax, you said that just Gl at the right moment. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, come again. <coughs> oh. Oh, and there's Ashley. Right. There's young Ashley. Do you see her anymore? Um, yeah, well, of course, she, she came back to do Hell Seeker, part six. And mm. there's, there's the photograph as of me as Elliot Spencer from Hellbound. Now, in the um, two I haven't seen, do you play Elliot ever again? No. It's no. a shame, because I, I like think, the um, Elliot character. Yes. He was he was good. That was me opening a can of coke, by the way. Can you hold on for a second? Terry, what are you doing? Um, and in fact, I'm going to do a convention with Ashley and uh, uh, Dr. Fowler. Phoenix. Uh, a sci-fi horror thing. Yes, this is this is me pouring a can of coke. <laughs> Sound effects. <laughs> glug glug glug. Until he comes on, he's really got nothing to say, do you, Doug? <laughs> Until you appear, <laughs> you're kind of like, well, I wasn't here for this shoot. What's going on? Yeah. No, well, I... When I, you're I, swinging I, that clock in the background. <laughs> yeah. And I was, the, I was in uh, North Carolina for the whole shoot, start you were, to finish. So, um, uh, but you, but and I, with I, your makeup, which is four and a half hours, or it used to be, uh, I don't know if they yeah, made that quicker. It, it, it has got quicker. It was slow. On Hellraiser three than it was, but it, it's more, to, to me. It's one of the you think so? It's one of the yeah. best makeups of, of all the Hellraisers, I think. Uh, it, uh, it really. Yeah. Look, there's a shoe again, folks. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, oh, he's blowing the shoe now. So yes. this really is getting bad. You, you don't want to do that. The shoe will get much bigger. Um, it's actually my least favorite makeup. Really? Yes. It's That's your funny. Favorite. Yeah. Well, maybe because I was there and I did it. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, yeah, it's, it seemed dirtier than... The next one, I remember, it seemed very I think clean. It, you seemed well, more zombie-ish. The first one was great, Hellraiser 1. Yes, that's, that's the dirtiest one, but it, it, it's slightly redesigned. There's a little triangle on the at the temples which was taken out. And what that triangle does is it keeps the nails regular right. across the head. So you get this kind of bunching of the nails above the ears. I was... I thought it looked a bit like a porcupine in this movie. But, um. <laughs> hey, if you say it's great, right, then, I, then, then it's great. I just, you know what, and the first two were great. It was a, it was the fourth one I thought, just, I didn't, it was not quite the same. I couldn't work out what it was about it. But. Right. Well, we'd, it, it had gone back to the way it looked in the uh, first two, but, but it, it, it is cleaner. Now, this is where, this idea for stripping her of the flesh I got because of that car commercial. Right. Ah, and I remember that car yes, commercial yes, yes, pulled yes. off the skin of the car. It's mm. it, it is so neat this moment. Mm. Oh, shoes again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. oh. Hello. Hello. Ah, wonderful. And I did of course I didn't see that until we were watching the premiere and I gasped <laughs> what had happened. <laughs> Mm. And this was done on the reshoots, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the sucking the, in. The physical thing. Yeah. Which was just well, the We'll explain that when we get to some of those reshoots. You know, when we made the movie for $2 million. Yeah. 
we couldn't afford they were, they were in the script but we couldn't afford to do them and then when yeah. Miramax picked it up they were like Tony do you want to go and do all that stuff and so I said yes please right right and it did make the ending much better I got to say Some so person. here's me now standing in the pillar unable to get out of the pillar not quite just about people to fall love that line. people love that line well you keep you keep suggesting you can yeah. hear me on the soundtrack. Just, uh, you can, farting. which I'm going to well, show you. When? What? Oh. Now? A miniature of the world and how it will succumb to us. You enjoyed the girl. Yes. Cool. Anybody heard of fart yet? So did I. And that's all. No. It's not the same. I just... No, what you did, that was fucking evil, man. <laughs> That's me laughing. Not oh, fun. how <laughs> uncomfortable that word must feel on your lips. Evil. Good. There, there is was. no good. No. There it was. <laughs> you have to no, listen to that without the order. That's extraneous Dolly Creek that you can. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, if it had been that loud, I would have known and demanded a retake. I'm not. I'm not buying that for a moment. <laughs> Anyway, there were two actors on set at the time. How do you know oh, it was me? exactly. It might have been, and he was in his underwear. So. It, there you go. <laughs> Mine would have been distinctly muffled. That's always a great line, too. Their fortune was so tempting, their affection so conditional. What else could you do? I remember you... Fuck you! I remember you saying to me, uh... You, you came up to me as I'm standing in the pillar, and you, um... <laughs> Slap you because you. You, 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 <laughs> you couldn't you, hit back. <laughs> you gave me a piece of direction, and then, and I couldn't nod my head or do it. And you said, "Is it? Am I getting through to you?" Because it's very difficult because because <laughs> these black eyes. And, <laughs> and you also said it's it, it it's great, but um, you really have to feel that you're part of the pillar. You know, we mustn't feel at all that you're an actor with your head stuck through a hole in the prop. Which is true. At which because point we both fell about laughing. Guess <laughs> what, what am I? I'm an actor with my head stuck through. But you know, amazingly, you don't think that. So you did pull it off. Because really, nobody's ever said it. You know, because really, it is a head sticking out of a... Yeah. And it was not comfortable. No. As it, it was a slightly different version of the makeup. So the the, um, the makeup comes off off my forehead and is is actually attached to the pillar. You see, I, I love all this dialogue. Yeah. I mean, Pete really Great. shines Fantastic when he does this stuff. Yes. And the way you twist and turn him and oh, use his yeah. weaknesses. Yeah. I know some of the fans were like, we think Pinhead talks too much. Really? Yeah, I remember because they were like, the first ones you were there as a power. For the most part, you know, they, you they, got the good they love it. And they're, and they're word perfect. They know it all. Mm. I don't anymore. Oh, there's some T-shirts with some lines. I sent mm. one to Pete. It's okay. And, you know, this set was nowhere near the nightclub. It's always no, great no. when you tie yeah. it, film yeah, set yeah. together, because you kind of even forget as you're watching it. Well, mm. Hold on, that was filmed a year later. Mm. <laughs> it has already begun. Hey, Joey! It's a great hey, little yeah. music piece here, too. Yes. I don't know if knows it, because it gives it a very... Oh, this actually I stole from Suspiria, I don't know if you remember Suspiria. Mm -hmm. Remember when she was talking to the yes. doctor and was those yep. high shots, yep. like somebody was watching. Um, yeah. But um, the, the speed you had to work at, how did you pull off finding the time to run the camera up? You probably just send exactly the other that, camera up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take this camera, yeah, run, run up, up there, there <laughs> and then I'm going to clear everybody from <laughs> nearby. Yeah, and, and the way I got this movie was a kind of interesting thing because it was a Sunday two o'clock in the morning call because my friend Buckley Norris who was an institute, still a big film insurance man in LA uh, was sitting having dinner with Larry Cuppin when Tony Randall pulled out and he put me up for the movie and I, right. I got a call and that was it I said Just you want to do Hellraiser 3 and I said fuck yes <laughs> you know, don't even bother sending me the script I'm such a big fan of the first two life should be like that yeah brother this hasn't been since yeah. So this is the stuff you filmed with Ashley way before. Way before we, we even yeah. kind of were really green lit on the movie. Really, but she could. It's the only time she could do it. Right. And we had nothing. That was just a video camera. And right. It's actually I was dubbing another movie at the time, and that's a dubbing stage. <laughs> and I thought they're going to see this shit, and I'm never going to. They're going to fire me. <laughs> <She> just, <laughs> 
came in and did it. But she's and great. She, she really hit it, though, yeah. didn't she? Mm. So, so she's she's done four four movies now, four Hellraisers. She has. Did she mm. come back? Yeah, in uh, Hellseeker. Yeah. yeah. Is that the one with Craig Sheffer? No, that was uh, Inferno, the oh, fifth one. movie. I like this with the hands and the. Oh. He's telling the truth, Joey. You haven't changed since you were 16. <laughs> <coughs> Much hairier now. <laughs> this is the old Propatia. <laughs> I like this with a hand that was very sexual, unlike the feet. <laughs> no, but she's teaching her how to. Oh, let me see it. I wasn't listening to Dan, but she's kind of teaching her how to open the box, even though you yep. don't really see it. Yeah, she, she was meant yep. to be showing her. This was a nice scene too, mm. and the box kind of growing in its grandeur. Mm. I still have that sitting at my coffee table. Mm. I, I have one of the yeah. prop boxes from this movie. Uh -huh. Battles. See, that ties in with the whole Elliot. First World War in Vietnam. Yeah. Hell on Earth. Hell on Earth. Yeah, you see, it all hangs together, folks. Yeah. So this is where we presumed Pinhead had really learned his, his, his ideas on death. You know, from the trenches. Yes. Which is why when we're yeah. in the trenches, we make it so horrific. Yes. Is that yes. really, you're a human being, you're not yes. a demon from the go, you were a human well, being. And just before we came out to film it, there was a documentary on the BBC about survivors of the Somme. And, uh, and one of the guys uh, said this extraordinary thing um, that I just grabbed hold of. Um, talking about all his comrades who had, who had died... Uh, on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, and I think, what, 60,000 British troops were killed or injured on, in the first 24 hours of the battle, um, that he felt as though he, he had cheated, that he was, he was in the wrong place, that he shouldn't have lived, mm. and that he, he, he should have been dead and he should have been buried along with his comrades yeah. in France. And I just thought, that's, that's exactly... Elliot's thing, right? That's exactly what leads him from there to this, right? A really interesting thing on D-Day when England lost its super uh, superpower status, and that was because we lost so many men. We didn't really have an army after the Second World War. No, you know, we yeah. just physically didn't have one anymore. What do you want? That's when America took over. That's Tony pouring a can of coke. <laughs> I like this in his uh, yeah. very gay underwear, which yes. Leonard had <laughs> styled perfectly for him. And I remember Kevin was like, I'm not going to wear these. <laughs> but Lenny had a way to persuade you. I did, uh, did quite a few more movies with him, too. Right. He always stormed off a movie, I remember, at some point. Yeah, he'd always you know, he'd have a huge tantrum and leave. <laughs> And you'd have to call him and apologise and send him flowers and he'd be back. <laughs> <laughs> but they're great costumes. I mean, it's great styling. Yeah, yeah it was. Why don't you come over here? He's go. actually lying on a Harley, isn't he? He certainly he? is, yeah, I like yeah, yes. Harley in the top floor bedroom. I just can't! And she's very good in this. Mm. I remember actually we took it out, but it was we did a blue screen shot here with everything kind of spinning behind her, kind of like a Hitchcock. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Huh. But it kind of took you out of the scene. Right. Uh, I mean, I shot it two ways. This is one of our only two days we were allowed with a crane <laughs> in our budget. <laughs> so I thought I'd better use it. It's a crane day, folks. It's a crane day, folks, <laughs> exactly. And in those days, you know, a guy sat in the crane. Yes. You know, now yeah. it's all hotheads yeah. and nobody yeah. goes yeah. near him. But, yeah. You know, at the top of the set, sitting there with the camera. 
Now this scene was not in the American version. Oh, Steve, that's Steve Hardy, Hardy our yeah. production designer, yeah. selling drugs, yeah. <laughs> which was his part-time job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He he came to visit me on Inferno when I did my 100th day in the makeup. Uh, 100 uh, days on Inferno. Yeah. No, my my 100th day overall. Oh, overall. And, uh, I said, Fucking hell. I've got a telegram from the Queen. And, uh, that was our second AD, by the way. Yes, it was. Second yes. and third. And, uh, in, in <laughs> loving over there. Again, Jack, I mean, Jerry just really did a nice work. Oh. I have yeah. a problem. Is, aren't they, guys, aren't you doing a 185 version of this? Mm. It's not Letterbox, is it? I've just noticed. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. no. No. Hopefully, the one on the DVD will be Letterbox. Yes, we hope so. And, oh, they are. Oh, says, yeah. a, says a voice off. And n no editing that out if it's not. <laughs> I want my displeasure if it's a 4 3. <laughs> this is a nice scene, too. Yes, it is. It's kind of funny. Come on, come near the pillow. really come went for this. I mean, she was. Yeah. Kevin wasn't holding back. I mean, he does play the sleaze bag really well. He's, he's pretty damn good at it, isn't he? <laughs> now that, if nobody knows, was meant to be the girl that he had yes. thrown in. That, that sucked, in. sucked the skin off. Yeah. This is about to be a big entrance. Oh, well, we've got little Elliot dream sequence. And then we cut back to this yes. and you come alive. Well, I've, got, I've, got to, I've got to swallow Terry first, haven't I? Yeah. No, you've got to swallow him. And do for Kevin. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's what she kicks him. That's one. Yeah. Another great, like, when we are, when she's kicking him and grinding. Yeah. And kicking him yeah. and grinding. Just holding it short. And they kept on wanting to shorten it. I was like, no, it's supposed yeah. to be unnerving. Yeah. They were like, it's really kind of horrible. I said, yeah, well, it's, isn't that the point? I'm just not ready yet. It's cool. It's kind of... And they're thinking, you know what, if I'm not going to get her, at least I'm going to get her. Oh, meanwhile, back at, back at, <laughs> back at Tony Hickox's death scene. Look at that. I know. It's a good, nice idea, but this is, remember this. This is interesting. Oh. We only had 20 extras, and they were yes. both the Germans and the English. Yes. That was a great And we were using full blanks, too, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Joey. I like the body parts falling. Welcome. But here they were as the British soldiers, and now here they come as the Germans. Yes. <laughs> Same guys, clean guys. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, the costumes were so expensive, they made it they're really cheap, but they look great. Yeah. And we we're very lucky with the light. Yeah, it's beautiful Just evening light. And then the, the night scenes I remember so clearly. Yeah, I do too. It was also amazing to see Pinhead. It was being so gentle and nice. Yeah. He suddenly understood him a lot more when he was me. Pinhead. The good and evil in all of us. Yes. See, that's a that's a nice little camera move there. Yeah. One of my favourites around that. We did a lot of a mm -hmm. lot on you actually, especially at the end. Mm -hmm. I remember Richard used to get so frustrated. I remember mm -hmm. take fourteen. Mm -hmm. He'd always fall off the edge of the dolly. <laughs> <laughs> To uh, Jack Nicholson there. Oh. Yeah. I want to hug you. You know, I want to hold you. I want to tell you it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you come here. No, no, you come here. No, no, no. no, no, no. Must no. come here. <laughs> no, you really got to come here. <laughs> we, can't, like, we can't move the plot on unless is, you come here. <laughs> you know, but this is. We made this actually. I think we made this lineup because we're like, what's really going to take her? And he said, well, 
that great that he's made up that line where he's like, well, if I go over there, it's going to get dangerous, and I'm just going to want to have sex with him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, then I guess I'm going to come yeah. over there. Feet. Yeah, there you go. Bell bottoms. It's a great so, top, too. Yeah. Fantastic. And everybody was like, how can you put her in bell bottoms? It was so out did, of date. Did Lennon man. pick up a lot of these stuff in, in he, New York? And he made it. A lot of, a lot of it's kind oh, of really? old stuff that he would embellish. Where were your arms and feet in that box? I'm standing inside the pillar. You've got and something I, to I hold. Two, yeah, you do. Two handles at the side to hold onto with my hands. And I'm sort of have my back bent and my mm. head poked through. Is it? Great deal of fun. Oh, the old knuckle dusters. And, and I still I remember, have those in there. Have you? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just in case. I remember um, I remember I turned North Carolina um, for the line, bring her to me, boy. <laughs> bring her to me. Bring her to me, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm See, this is a great scene, too. I'm mm. Now you suddenly stop treating the voice. It suddenly sounds like me. Let me, let me listen. Oh look, a full cast and crew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me reintroduce so, this with cast. Uh, who was in this film then? Larry Mortov Bum. Yes. <laughs> he wasn't that bad, was he? Hold <laughs> on, you didn't give us any reviews. <laughs> so. Uh, who did play the girl? Bill the Bouncer. Anthony Hickok, Soldier 2. <laughs> Dead Soldier 2. This is, but this is actually one of my favourite speeches. And here where you obstruct each yes. other's view, you become each other's face. It's lying bleeding at your feet. Yeah. And we made up a line. We know, the one where women, nothing's as bad as a woman's yes. scorn. And I, I was doing a second lot of looping at Miramax here in London, and they needed a fill-in line, and um, they, they hooked me up on a transatlantic line to Pete, and Pete and I came up with that line. Yeah, it's a great line. Is it hell hath no fury Fear. like a woman's scorn? Yeah. I see this is a one where she's like, ah, I said, make you so heavy. Mm. She's really good. Yeah. <laughs> right, we had to cut a lot of that out of the American. They don't like hooks in flesh unless they're in Abu Dhabi. See, Larry Cuppin was in the movie too, wasn't he? Mm. Is he? In the nightclub. Derelict. Derelict. Oh, he must have been standing around the fire in the opening scene. Just... Oh, here you come. Oh. Bang bang. It's so funny now when you look at what's going on in CGI and you go back to what we <laughs> practical effects of the day. She she's not on this cast list at all. She's not. <laughs> she doesn't seem to be. You know what? She might have taken a name off because she didn't. Really? Yeah. Uh, Amy know. Lee, I think she was, wasn't she? Amy. Amy is definitely the name. I don't know the surname. So I think she, she, oh. she was a Lee then, not a Grant. <laughs> yeah. Same you know what? Maybe side. because she was so upset. Oh no, there she is. Oh, she is. Amy. Hi, Amy. Very good. Amy Lee. <laughs> At last. I am free. The nice shot, that. I think I stole it from Hellraiser 2. Didn't you do something with <laughs> the blue light behind? You do that kind of thing all the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old radio with my voice in my head. Again. So is this the third time now we've heard your yeah. voice? Mm -hmm. I'm cheap. That's the. Well, I heard that. <laughs> in fact, free, I heard. <laughs> They'll pay you. <laughs> and this is uh, this is Pete's homage to Jean Cocteau. Oh, it is with, right with the radio. Yeah. Um, from Orfe, uh, where the messages come to Orfe as messages 
on, <laughs> See, on never, the radio that, he never the messages got that. from the underworld. And I think, in fact, he put in the direct quote um, of Cocteau's that comes across the radio in North Bay. L'oiseau chant avec ses doigts. He does, exactly. Deux fois. It, exactly. The bird sings with its fingers twice. God, I'm glad somebody told me that after yeah, yeah. 16 years. I like that climbing over. I remember this going to the window. Because mm. we actually built, we took down New York and built the room on the other side of the window, didn't we? Yes. And then we kind of ripped off waxwork with the old <laughs> putting your hand through time. Yeah. It's an extraordinary nightdress. Where the hell did you find that? Was it was it made. made. It's, a, it's a Lenny Pollock special. I kind of wanted to give it that period feel, like a ghost. It's kind of interesting. With a bow at the back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he had a night dress and a bridal gown. <laughs> exactly. Well, that was the point. You see? There you go. To Elliot, the only man she could identify but with. But that's the dummy, isn't it? Yeah. Well, no, don't speak about yourself oh, like I'm sorry. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's an exact rip off and wait. <laughs> it's okay when you're ripping yourself off. That's absolutely, well, it's just okay to rip off, basically. <laughs> but only rip off from the best, I would say. <laughs> yeah, like that, when you close your eyes, like, mm. how's this going to feel? But that's, mm. that's also Orfe. When, uh, when they, they step into the underworld, they walk yeah. through, through mirrors. Oh, right. Let's see. Fucking hell, I'm learning something new. In fact, this she, she is, this really is, this is the cinematic line, homage the movie. <laughs> it's not a shot in this film. It isn't, it's <laughs> stolen it's from somewhere it's else. It's the Kill Bill of horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> remember, the, 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 it was difficult this to remember. I'm trying to remember, but I think this all up how they transfer to the... To the trenches and uh, that yes. set, and, we, yeah. and there was a wall right there, so we couldn't do anything. So we just no. had to put a put huge bright light. We had yeah. to reflect down onto, I think, white. Yeah. So it would just blow out. This was this was what I was saying before. I've had so many strange memories of this night, and it was cold, wasn't it? Yeah, and it felt like we were in the trenches. And you had a I weird remember walking feeling. walking back to the to the trailer and turn round, and there'd be this little group of soldiers huddled around one of Ray Bivens little gas fire uh, campfire effect things <laughs> and it you completely double take looking at it because it just looked like the real thing apart yeah. from the coyotes howling in the background <laughs> I don't think we're a feature on the western front <laughs> and I remember it was real mud and that we'd wet it down so I meant you were really knee deep in mud mm. which kind of gave you that feeling yeah yeah where Pinhead learnt all his dirty tricks from the death humans do to each other. Uh, and we actually got a dead horse from... Was it really? another movie? Yeah, it was... Well, it wasn't a real one, but it was... What were they shooting? That big western, the Kevin Costner one was shooting. Uh, Dance uh, of the Wolves. Wolf. And that's where we nicked it from. They were shooting in South Carolina. Huh. And I remember I needed a dead horse. I wanted a dead horse. For some reason, the First World War always, you know... Mm. Those shots of the battlefield always had yeah. dead horses and mm. probably never shook hands with a ghost before. And uh, um, spot on to make him a captain. The captains have the shortest life expectancy oh, of they do. all ranks on the Western Front, apparently. Well, basically, yeah, this is where you explain it all. Yes, but this dialogue was changed slightly, wasn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, you'd... From when we looped it to what I'm actually saying there... Did we try and explain it maybe a little more? So I know well, we did the Indian scene, and then we that wasn't included in one version, so... Yeah. 
I think um, I, I can't remember now. You see, nowadays, this scene that we would have done mm, with that, when we pulled that without the dummy and we would have put you in there talking. Yeah. And it would have yes. been great. Instead of having it still like this, yes. I could have actually put you in there yeah. buying the box. Yeah. <laughs> You're very good at standing still. Which one's acting better? <laughs> <laughs> and we got uh, John Reese Davis on the right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we followed him. Uh, and this, again, for those who haven't seen the first two, this is footage from the beginning yeah. of Hellbound. Refer to the second movie in your box set. <laughs> you doing a voiceover for that one too? I don't think so. No, good. So we'll all listen to this one then. Yes. This was great stuff. It was really yes. nice film. Yeah. yeah. And this is yeah. this is Hellbound Two, I think. It's two, yeah. 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 That one shot was two. Yeah. And then we recreated and we're, we're this back on set. Yeah. Nicely done too, and it was just a tiny little corner, wasn't it? We had oh, yeah. <laughs> no room to move. <laughs> I know, Take one step too many and you were off. And the way you, we jump between the two, it's nearly, you know, it's nice Jerry done. did do a great job. It yeah. looks like the same place. Yeah, because this is Hellbound. Yeah, and this is us. And we're on, we're back. Yeah. And this, is, this actually and shows how the pillar becomes... Yes, this, uh, this is the end of Hellbound. And then it kind of grows as things do and develops, sucking everything in. Waiting for Terry Fowl. Now I have a bone to pick with you here. <laughs> uh oh. What do I do? Listen. In your world. Unbound. Unstoppable. unstoppable. You know you didn't say unstoppable. Bubble, bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Do you go unstoppable? Bubble? Unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was Pinhead trying to break through. <laughs> like double voice for a second. <laughs> Well, you're picking that bone with me. You said it. <laughs> you put it in the movie. <laughs> I probably only did one I, take. I had no. I'm so, you were so good. <laughs> you never have to do more than one take. Do you? Yeah, oh, no. Flattery will not work. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's also the, the story is very nicely laid out in Horizon 3. Yes. Because you get to know, okay, now you've made it this far, now you've got to do this and go uh, on your own from here. And... And you give the riddle, so she really wasn't still able to go, hold on, what's he mean, bring him back? Mm. My domain. I'm trying to remember the, the original end. What was the original end? Was it just a, a low-budget version of what we got to reshoot very nicely for two days? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember, because I'm so used to this end yes, now. Yes, yes. Um, maybe it'll come when we get there. <clears throat> As the actress said, yes. More local, as the altar boy said. <laughs> uh, Rose of the Flatbush thing. So, again, the scene was, ne was not filmed on the original. There should be a set. few more crew members turning up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once again, there's Pete. And everything is coming alive. That. I love yeah. that. This is the, the morphine this moment coming up, isn't it? Little cocktail, yeah. right. um, which was also, yeah, I mean, it's, it's from La Bella La Bette, the, the arm through the yeah. wall, but then used by Polanski in Repulsion. Exactly. I got the Repulsion one, I didn't get the other one. Time to play. And yeah, I'll tell you funny, uh, did you see the invite for the, the South Park Halloween party? No. I've got to get you it, because yeah. they did it. It was drawn by the original guys, but they did a pinhead with oh, time really? to play. Uh, no and that kidding. was the invite. It was a South Park, <laughs> what's his name, dressed up in pinhead. I got one at home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's Piers, my roommate. Oh. He's now a commercial director. And there's Zach Galligan from Gremlins. Yes. You only see him for a few. Yes. It's all our mates in LA. And there Kim goes Anderson. the Morphed Ice yeah. Cube. So, this, no, no, there's Pete. 90% of this was done. 
back in LA when on the issues. Yeah. Because uh, and originally now originally it ended with the blood. Well, uh, originally Pinhead was going to do those CDs manually. Was he going to do it by hand? Mm -hmm. Everybody's revenge on the CD DJ. <laughs> <laughs> So all these were all these were added. That's a famous football player, I remember. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so these are all just mates from LA. The first one they had you arriving and everybody running for the door, the chains and yes. the blood. Yes. Which I love this shot. Yes. And now this one's been ripped off I've seen in quite a few minutes. Yes. And the great sound effects. Yes. And this, this again was just a little corner on the soundstage, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. Tilted floor. Tilted floor. Bob Keane's guys pouring buckets of blood on buckets the other side. Buckets of blood. I work with Bob a lot, too. Right. I love Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've done a few more movies with him. Uh, that's Rick Ammy, who was a for real uh, uh, news anchor guy right, yeah. locally, wasn't he? I had dinner with him and his wife, I think. He was big fan of the movies and he was so jazzed to be in it <laughs> it's funny that you do get a lot of people that time we got all those extras for nothing mm. we're like oh we get to be in a Hellraiser movie cool well that's uh, after we'd we'd done that uh, I make a special blowing, opinion blowing away the nightclub scene sundown my um, vampire western white sort too yes I could get them all yes. for free so. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> copyright <laughs> problems Waxwork 2, me being interviewed. Yeah. I don't know what that uh, too. It's all crap on the TV these days, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> must, must be late night cable, it's one of my movies. <laughs> but after after we'd done the blowing away the, the nightclub scene, I remember Larry came and said, because um, uh, it must have been about three, four o'clock in the morning, that most of the extras had been there for nothing if they were getting anything and they'd been there mostly because they they knew they might be in a scene with Pinhead and would I go up to the bar at the boiler room and hang out for a bit and I said yeah it's fine not a problem in your full makeup <laughs> I still had makeup on I pulled a pair of jeans I took the costume off pulled a pair of jeans on threw a jacket on and as I'm walking away these two beautiful girls appeared at either shoulder and uh and one of them said, uh, <laughs> I can remember this. <laughs> we were just wondering what it'd be like to have your babies. <laughs> and I said, well, the first thing you need to know is that the pins go all the way down. And the other one, without even pause for breath, just whispered back, we were kind of hoping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, Larry Cuffin gave me um, uh, permission and full marketing rights uh, to, uh, to to market the pinhead arouser condom uh, <laughs> during the making of this movie. <laughs> pinhead arouser condom. <laughs> Something I never got round to. It'll tear your um tear you up. apart. I remember this is rain. Why do we ever put rain in movies? It's always hell. Yes. But it does look good. It does look good. And always those dreaded words yeah. on the call sheet wet down oh no and I love this this was like this is fantastic and this was this taken from what some I saw the pictures from what, what was that famous Gustav, massacre Gustav. no the, oh. no it's from the, the was it Waco or where they'd all committed suicide oh uh, uh, is it Bob Jones the, oh. the thing in Guyana where he put the the I think it was in the, the American. Was it the American? No, there was an American one. The Waco is. Yeah, is, I know. Is, is they were shot. This wasn't it. The the. I can't the, remember. I saw all these stills of all these. put the people. poison in the Kool Aid, yeah. and they all came up to drink. And they were all dead, yeah, like yeah, piles yeah. of dead bodies. Yeah, and that's where I got the idea for this. But it also it looks like uh, um, uh, Gustav Doré's prints of uh, Dante's Inferno. Right. And again, Jerry's lighting is, is spot on. Is fantastic. I love that to save that wide shot until you kind of step through and you see her in a pile of bodies. Remember, I mean, you might not remember because you went on, but we'd waited for a steady cam and it got held up. So this was all done handheld. Right. It actually worked much better. I, <coughs> I don't think I was there this, this no. night. Because, you know, 
the port operator had to step back through all the bodies. Oh, did, did we do this the same night as the audience of death? Might have it might have well been actually, sure. but then you would have been in your poor four hours. I of would have been waiting around for a long time. Yeah. So that I'm, never happens. <laughs> Not in <on> film sex. <laughs> but then you know you can only keep your eyes in for twenty minutes, right? Or you could in those days. Well, no, on this. This, that was true of the first two movies and when we started out on this movie. And then um, uh, I got hooked up with this guy in Greensboro, um, uh, an optician who had found these lenses that, uh, that I could just wear all day. And they were to my prescription, which I've used ever since. So I, I put them in at the, at the top of the day when the makeup goes on and, and they stay in all day. Oh, brilliant. Are we on again? We are. Our bladders are empty. <laughs> and we had a vodka. <laughs> or three. No, we're making that bit up. But this, yeah. This I is love this set fantastic. Of this, this I, I, is... I remember when Steve was lighting him, he would get to the end candle. Right. And literally and then, the first one would be nearly out. Yeah. So we had about 40 guys Strong. lighting the candles. I mean, this is, this is one of the great scenes yeah. in... The whole Hellraiser series, no question. Yeah. And it was meant to. Well, <laughs> I never got the gambling guy, but <laughs> right. it was one of Steve's favourite creatures. Yes. yes. Camera head, of his head. Yeah, which, which gets sewn back on yes. with a camera later. Yes. yes. <laughs> but Terry's very good in the scene, too. Terry yeah. and you, but you're yeah. always good. Well, and also my the lenses we were just talking about give me a kind of um, blood red wash over everything. So this scene was just it was just there for the taking, really. Yeah, and it's also some and, great and dialogue. Peter is very best. Yeah. yeah. I make one false move in this scene every time I see it. I, I want to re-record it. I look like the guy from Prodigy there. <laughs> Yeah, well, they look like you. Yeah. Stop. I'll send you back to hell. <laughs> oh, no, you can't stop me, child. But you don't have to hear the music. Just give me the box, and I'll free you from the future. Free yourself from the past. Don't debate with me, Carl! Why did I shout that Just come here. I hate that every time I You think it's a fake move? No, I, I, it's, 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 I like that because you... It should have, it should have stayed down. <clears throat> No, no, what I like, but you won't like, is the fact that she is getting to you. And yeah, I kind yes. Of, for me, I, I like that, that she's she's actually, she's making you angry. Well, yeah, is, I, I, I see that. Uh, it, just, it always seems... You just didn't like to be one like to that. keep squealing. But. And now, we come in. It's funny, whenever I go to screenings of this or premieres, I'll, I'll stand outside until this end third because you know it's a, it's not a fast movie. It's really no, a, it's yes. a slow build yeah. horror it's movie. Really, just starting to ride the roller coaster. And now you go now. like you know the audience yeah. have made it to here. Yeah, they're going to no, walk okay. out very happy. Yeah. Huh. And we're back on Greensboro. We, we had we'd a whole so week of nights, didn't we? Mm, what a nightmare this was. Now the, there's an awful, you've got an awful lot of homages going on in the background <laughs> in shop windows here too, haven't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and on the cinema. Yeah. This was difficult to flow water down a flat street. Yes. You know, until we got there, Which we realised. Which was realized, Elm Street, wasn't it? Yeah. It was exactly yeah. what it was called. But you know, to actually get water to flow on a on a flat street. Yeah. Was difficult. But I just, it just built nicely in that. And you kind of notice the real flames and real explosions going yeah. on with this poor actor. It's not, you know, yeah. way before CGI still. Mm. Now, you were determined to take Penhead out of this altogether, weren't you? Yes, I thought it wasn't elegant for you to be there. But we because were put the, back in by Miramax. So the, the, the idea was that... You send your the, minions. That I'm orchestrating yeah. this. And exactly. there was a... There was a Larry's. Yeah, there was. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and there was a great moment with me um, ripping one of the cops' tongue out with, a, Where? with handcuffs when we can confront the cops at the end, um, which was taken out. Oh, yeah. I was going to say it's not in the movie. On, I think. No, yeah. no, no, which is a shame. 
No, because I thought oh, here comes here comes you were, head, to, to me. You you were a, you were a general and you were controlling them all, and you right. didn't really go chasing out onto the streets. That's why you had these guys. Yeah. You know, you built these guys to do your your walking work. You were just going to come in for the finale. I still think it's wrong that you're in there. Right. <laughs> I, th I think it was. Well, we argued about this yeah. all the time. I remember. Yeah. Correct as an act in my voice again. Hello, love. Steve Painter, one Steve. of uh, who, who um, as assisted on my makeup. Now, um, this is my special effects makeup debut. Uh, I did the uh, the the circle on Steve Painter's head, which <laughs> is then CGI'd out. Bob had no one left to do it, and I was. <laughs> he uh, gave you your green, your green Because I stayed, uh, I stayed around on set all all week that we were on nights just to stay on turnaround um, and uh, Bob had no one left to do it and I said well this is, I'm not doing anything this is a great makeup people love yeah. this character I've got to say CD heads are one of yeah. the ones that, that yeah. people remember it just I don't know why and um, and the Barbie uh, Cenobite the barbed wire the is Pete yeah it's Pete Aiken. yeah mm -hmm. oh, we have to give him something to do Here's the cinema. Now, what what homages did you get on the cinema? I don't know. Probably some some of my straight to video movies. It was the only time they'll ever play in a cinema. <laughs> <laughs> there is Pete. There is Pete Atkins, the writer. There's Bobby. Well, that was mad. Do you know the trouble we had to get that flame to go outwards? Mm. Because the way you do it in flamethrowers is you actually spit fuel, which is the reason it goes forward. Yeah. But flame naturally goes up. So it's got to be very powerful to actually go yes. out in a vertical, yeah. uh, a horizontal direction. So there's a huge problem with that. This is actually a stunt coordinator and his wife. There's his wife. Remember, he did the stunts for Terry Fowl. Yes. And there's Bobby. Yeah. A stunt guy. I love this shot. This was like Sergio yeah. Leone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another homage. Didn't. Who played CD? Was it Steve? Not the character, but no, no. The, the character was Brent Oldhouse. Yes. Actually dressed. I think Steve Hardy was. Was it? Was was it Steve? Played, played him in makeup. Oh. Yeah. Probably says Brent there, right? As a DJ. Uh, he'll be credited as DJ. I don't think we've got the satellites. Yeah. Because they were meant to be the same account. Yeah. But, you know, this yeah, was fun to blow up. Yeah. And it was the last shot we did at Greensboro, yeah. wasn't it? Right before dawn. Yeah, before they kicked us off the streets yeah. and yeah. never let the film crew ever go there again. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of complaints from the neighbours. It's a great old show. It's just like it. Mm. Now this is... Uh, let's remember this set. Yes. The only real bit of the set was that piece. Mm. The red carpet mm. down the middle. Yep. The chairs and the little window at the end. Everything yep. to the side is fake. It's open, yeah. Well, yeah, there was just no yep. set there, and we, yep. that's all painted. Our glass so mat. Good. I mean, get that yeah. wonderful lighting too. Again. Yeah. When it matches. And Jerry perfect. never seemed. I always used to take the piss out of Jerry because all he ever <laughs> did was walk around and hold his hand up to things <laughs> and sort of look at the floor. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? How, how does that tell you anything? Ah, young Douglas. Young so, Douglas. Ah, secrets of the trade, dear boy. <laughs> and this is the one This is a great... I love this. <laughs> then what the fuck is that? The fuck is <laughs> there that? are no demons. Then what, what the, the fuck, fuck is that? Great. <laughs> <laughs> I yep. don't know. What the fuck am I? And that's Clayton. Yeah. From my mat recently at uh, mm -hmm. a show at the NEC in Birmingham. Those old model windows back right there. Um, Clayton did the local casting, didn't he? He did, he was a casting director. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and his wife Sharon, who also was... Isn't she the nurse in the opening sequence? Mm. She was, wasn't she? Was, uh, Sharon Hill, blonde nurse, yes. Now this... Yeah, and this is the scene. the scene that got the huge cheer in Milan when they yeah. played it to 5,000 people. They were yeah. standing up. I was so up for this scene, so up for it. Right, I love the, the way you do that. You bend your shoulders into it. Probably because of the because costume. Can, you the, only, the only way I can bend. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's acting. <laughs> uh, uh, I had had, I think, only one hour's sleep the night before. I went to bed at a decent hour, and I woke up 
an hour later and I, I never got back to sleep again. I remember, wasn't it on the, I think it was back from this church shoot that Russ Brandt and I raced and he got arrested. I remember oh, he was put in jail. Yeah, you were pulling handbrake U-turns on the <laughs> main street we in High Point. back in our higher <laughs> cars. I'm with the movie. Oh, that's all right, sir. Yeah, yeah. I said it wasn't. He got caught. But that always annoyed me, that piece of wood stayed up there. Mm. And there's a little stagger from me here. Yeah. Because the whole, the whole yeah. damn thing was moved. moving. Yeah. You know, this was, we pulled this scene out of nowhere. Mm. No, we didn't have any money. No. Any time. Yeah. The worms in the head were just kind of done there and then, like, well, yeah. well let's do it. This is great. You were trying to feed the poor guy raw liver. It certainly was. Make an act. Yeah, well, I think it was a piece of peach in the end. <laughs> Which is um, entirely right. I was faintly disappointed, you know, because I because this scene, first of all, it, it's straight blasphemy, as it were, because I, right. I'm quoting Jesus on the uh, in the crucifixion pose. I am the way. Then I'm taking the words of of the Catholic Mass. This is my body. This is my blood. And I thought this is great because we're we're going to have all the fundamentalists and the Catholics up in arms and picketing the the, the cinemas, and we're going to be on every prime time news broadcast in the country, and the box office is going to go through the roof. And there was never a murmur. Never, never. Well, I think the whole thing's so blasphemous. They probably didn't even go to see it. You know, they would already Hellraiser. But remember, the posters were all pulled from America. Were they? Oh yeah. That was going to be a huge. I mean, it did very well in the long run. In the you know, I mean, in the second week it went up. But the first that 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 the M MP was it called uh, MPAA pulled the mm. posters. They said pin it no. to. You didn't know that. No. It was a big drama when Miramax tried to sue them. Oh. Yeah. Because the pinhead poster that is now on the box, they said, was too scary for children to put up in a bus stop. So they changed the whole poster <laughs> campaign. But by that time, they. They didn't have a replacement. It was the last week because Bob so what, said, "I'm going to win. I'm going to win." The, the one I know, which is the head of Pinhead, that never came out in the cinema poster. Really? It was a picture of Terry Farrell no. running huh. in America. Here, I've, and I've never seen it. Never ever seen it. I've got them at home, but no, it's a totally different poster campaign. This is I love this scene. screwed up country, mm. but I love it dearly. <laughs> I do. I do. No, too. I do. <laughs> And this is Kevin and uh, um, Paula. In yeah. Paula's great. Yeah. Yeah. This is a nice S and M. And he, that was tough for him with that piston that yeah. the Harley Davidson going through his head. Yeah. And we're at uh, Wake Forest University, aren't we? Yeah. yeah this is where I wanted you to reappear, Shut but you did. <laughs> No, no, this, no, we're in a different scene now. There's the, just that one shot you've got when she's, before she gets to the church. Oh, to that's right. Yeah, following. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. The church was a big appearance. I remember, oh, it's just, these were tough nights. They had so much mm. to do. Mm. And these are big shots at night. Mm. This is where she realizes, hold on. Play with this. This first time Pinhead's ever used in a Hellraiser movie, isn't it? Uh, it's the first time he's ever been called Pinhead. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, he's, he's that wouldn't mean anything to him because he's he has no awareness of being called Pinhead. Exactly. But he does look like one. You may very well <laughs> think so. <laughs> Nail it. <laughs> yeah. In Spain, I'm... Um, they the, the pinch us, I think. Head of the shark things. Head of the shark, you think I like that one better? <laughs> you could have said, take that, head of the yeah. shark thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really confused here. The old faint, it's all over trick. And some very bad stop motion. But what could you do <laughs> for the budget coming up? <laughs> Yes, I think when the audience goes, hold on. We know it's not really over. There's a whole bunch to come yet. Mm. The old trickery. In fact, the first time Pinhead had ever been in daylight. 
coming up. Yes. And Bob Keen was panicking about that. Yes. I remember he was like, fuck. I, I, I remember we were chasing the light. The sun had very nearly set. Because I was spending so long dying probably, on this Probably because you morning. spent the whole morning dying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the actors were left the having actors to were left gabble hanging. their lines at double speed, <laughs> while the director was shouting, Hurry up! Hurry up! We're losing the light! Act quicker! <laughs> Here comes the ghost. Joey meets her dad. Now, who was this guy? Mm, I like him. He was from a soap opera. Mm. Mm. And he was another friend of Larry's, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, he's a nice guy. It's very nice. I think it was Larry. Larry had a lot of people... That if they flew themselves in, they yes, could be, they in, the could be in the movie. There's a deal. <laughs> There's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing that. Yeah. Mm. At which point, Peter G. Boynton. Yeah, Boynton. That's right. Yes. At which point, the audience realise he is not. Don't give him the box. Somebody Something shouted in the premiere. Oh, really? No. <laughs> 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 You've seen a movie, you fool. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. And now we do some morphine. Oh, wait a minute. We do half morphine. We couldn't afford to take it any further, I remember. Really? But literally, this was one of the first times it's ever been used in a horror movie. Really? Yeah. And it was like two-dimensional uh, computer effects. You see, the reason, the reason Bob was worried... Actually, we're almost saved because you can see in that shot how the the sun is almost down, and you've got this wonderful golden light. But the the, the makeup just doesn't work in daylight. It's just not designed. The colouring, isn't see, it? The yeah, colouring is yeah. not. But it's you're just, right. The, the golden light saves it. Yes. I've also got my skirts pinned up around the bottom. Remember that? Because I couldn't I couldn't run after her across this bean field without <laughs> tripping ass over tit. <laughs> Much like her. She looks, it, it looks great there. But actually that was lit, wasn't it? Because that's a blue screen. Yeah. She just remembered. Because the roof's coming. And I think she was filmed in daylight. That meant at night time. That shot there on her was all lit by Jerry. Cause you accused me of, of turning Cockney in this as well. <laughs> There's the blue screen. Yeah. Now this is all new. This was all the resh when we reshot the end. Yes. From the, from so we're in, in. we're in LA. We're in LA now, yeah. So weird, because I really can't remember the original end. It must have been really bad. Or I think um, we had one day to shoot it, and they gave us... We had three on this. And then my, um, another on yes. this with Cronenberg. I think it probably wasn't that different, you know, but... It just, um, we had more time to do yes, it right. Yes, and I don't think you had Joey in... Well, Tied up yeah, like a yeah, helmet yeah. newness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a I love that shot. I resist. Mm. Resist. Bob was so proud of this. He was like, mm. it's so close on the makeup. You made me. There is a world out there waiting to yield to us. Your eyes are great. So much flesh. So many different pleasures. This one especially, because I hate to see monsters with good teeth. You notice? You see all these really, really good makeups and they have these perfectly. Yeah, I always hated that bit of the makeup where they, uh, they put the discoloration on there. Well, this, this is Cronenberg, too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big penis like creature with metal. That's a nice look. The sperm coming out of its mouth. <laughs> the grilling that never stops. Mm. <laughs> it only had two movements, but you kind of you keep on cutting back. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, same old movement. Been forever to do that. I Drop remember, in the box. Yeah, yeah. It dropped in the right place. Oh, makeup's a little wonky here, I thought, but it's a, mm. well, the morphing is just a little yeah. fake. Yeah. Now, uh, the makeup's good. There's a morphing, that forehead stretch. Mm. Now, that's that's original footage, yeah. this, isn't it? Uh, it was my stand-in who got the, got the job to play Pinhead. 
There was a long queue, I remember, everybody trying to convince you and Paul that they really looked a lot like me. Tall people, short people, thin <laughs> people, fat people. <laughs> And there's a, that shot, remember, before lunch? Yes. And they were trying to break us, and Rich yes. kept on falling yes. off the dolly. Yes. <laughs> that was the 18 takes. Yes. <laughs> and I think by the time Richard had got it without falling off the dolly, and we were on about take 15, I think we fucked up the dialogue. <laughs> That's a nice moment. Yeah, I like the squeaking fingers. It took a lot of time to get that sound. <laughs> the squeaking on glass. <laughs> mm. Remember, we wanted to come up with a better line and we still couldn't get one of them go to hell because it was just yeah. too obvious for me. But. Yeah. Oh, no. oh. I'm pins. This one worked pretty well for it. Remember, we were trying to work on how to get pinned into a box. Mm -hmm. And they did actually a good job. Yeah, I remember rescuing the little teapots of whiskey to help with the roaring and screaming of, <laughs> uh, at that moment. I didn't really need it, it was just, you know, he offered it and I said yes, so they kept on coming. They kept on coming. <laughs> yeah, and this is the, where originally Hellraiser 4, which I suppose it did in a way, but... Not quite the way I'd envisioned it was going to take, you know, the building, the city was yes. going to become. It, it's kind of there. <coughs> the, the, re box. the reappearance of Pinhead in, in Bloodline is the box embedded in a pillar in the in the, uh, in the, in building, the, in the right? bowels of the building. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite take over that feeling that you set up at the end of this, of, of the whole building being infected. Right, and then spreading um, through the city. And yeah. I've got a very funny story coming up when this... this the statue, which the statue, the, explains, the you know, sculpture. The, which explains to me Hellraiser Four, the the, the, the box in the center of the world. It, uh, this is and in this Charlotte? is because yeah, Charles, because it's I got lost and I found this. And, yeah. I was looking for the set, and I saw it recently in another movie. Oh, or, you did, or on TV, and I, I was, uh, the TV was on, and I was only half looking, and I thought that was my brother, by the way. Just oh, right, <laughs> um, was the, the editor the, 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 the edited the movie. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but I was literally, remember I got, it was after the rap party, and I overslept, and I got to, like a bit like today, and got to, <laughs> totally lost coming to the set, and I was walking around Charlotte, and I came across that statue, and I was like, hold on, this is where we should be shooting. Ken Carpenter. Doc. Yeah. It was an odd thing, because I remember, remember Ken Carpenter who played Doc pitching an idea for Bloodline to me, which was about Pinhead being blasted into space. And we were, you know, we were on our fourth or fifth vodka by that time, and I sort of said, mm, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. Um, Ty, Ty Arnold, great guy. Um, uh, and lo and behold, what did we do in Bloodline? There you were. We went into space. Yeah. Was that in the original <laughs> never say never. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do I like that? Clive storyline. Yeah. It was a three-part story, wasn't it? Do I remember the original yeah. script? Which I thought was really good. And they spent money on Bloodline too, didn't they? Uh, they did in the end. They weren't <laughs> planning to. Oh, they weren't planning. I'm trying to do what we did then. <laughs> Basically, we had the same same time and the same money that that we had for this, oh. which wasn't enough because it was very, very ambitious and complex screenplay. And also. You know, this had come out and done very well for them, so yeah. people were not going to play the free card necessarily. It, no. it had gone beyond the cult movie and suddenly it was like a but Miramax. Also, also, this is, um, it's relatively effect light. I mean, it, it's relatively, uh, uh, Bill Bradley interns uh, just going up there right. on, on the special effects makeup crew. That's me. Um, <laughs> uh, um, this is relatively plot and character driven. It is, so very it's very a horror movie. And Bloodline is. just flatly is not. It's absolutely effects driven and, and 
to try and do it in the same time with the same amount of money was just never going to happen. And also, you know, most of the effects in this were put in later anyway. Gary Tonicliffe who's done my makeup and been special effects and uh, does the supervisor toys. on all the, uh, the movies since then. Eddie Flex, now that's a nightmare. This was what happened before digital. Mm -hmm. It was when you would sit there with a bank of literally 20 videotapes. Right. And you could never see more than four cuts at a time because all the videos would play the different takes and they were right. cut in and it was non-linear. Right. So it was a nightmare to cut before on. Before you But Larry Cuppin owned the company. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. right before yes. Avid. Oh, yes. It was like the future is video editing. And it was a nightmare. I don't know how we ever cut the movie. Because literally you'd have these banks and you'd hear them all click in every time there was a cut. The video would go... <laughs> really? It was like a dinosaur. Oh, God. So, yeah, and we actually did the music a few times for this, I seem to remember. Dubbing, redubbing. That's a Bob Weinstein likes to. But you know what? The sound is very good in the end, and I still, yes, I worked is. with, uh, what's his name on my last movie? He did the sound design on this. I'm blanking, but. English guy. Uh, yes. Um, so I'm in LA now with a very good company. They just did Blast. <laughs> sound department. Sound designer. Tim. Tim Gadamer. No, no, no. We bought on a second guy. No. Ah, you see, the, the Bob bought on another guy. Right. And then the, the album, which came out, but I don't remember any of these songs actually in the movie. Well, when it was, when it, yeah, it was originally going to have a rock and roll soundtrack, wasn't it? Yeah, but it didn't work. The, the, the Motorhead's Hellraiser comes on now, I think, of the rest right. of the credits, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and I know um, the the Dylan Dog Festival in uh, Milan, in Italy, they had one of the first screenings of the movie um, in a football stadium. Yeah, that's the one I was saying, where they were cheered when yeah. they did the mass. That, that had the rock and roll soundtrack on it then. Right. Yes. Well, that's it, folks. How to make a low-budget movie. Filmed on location <laughs> in North Carolina. <laughs> that's all, yeah. folks. That's it. There is no more. Well, there's about eight more. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, out. there's plenty more. <laughs> but not for this movie. <laughs> Please take your popcorn with you and leave, yeah, leave. leave the cinema in an orderly fashion. Yeah. Thank you for coming, Be folks. Be considerate to the neighbours. Not. <laughs>